Hey guys, welcome back. Chris at the Rockford Ordinance Channel and thought I'd do something a little different today. Uh, we're coming to you from uh, my secret bunker here um, and we're sitting on what I call the Kolejnikov couch. It's good old commie red and what better uh, place to make a video about our favorite weapons, uh, the Kolejnikov. Um, Today, I thought I'd bring you something a little different than we usually do. Um, there's a lot of videos out there uh, that I would call buyer's guides or um, how to buy your first AK or what to look for. So I thought I would do kind of an update because a lot of them out there right now, frankly, are, are dated and the market has changed tremendously. There's some weapons that are available uh, today that weren't some years ago. And there's some that have left the market due to bans or companies going under or what have you. So figured uh, we'd do an update and uh, run through, you know, different things to look for or watch out for uh, when choosing your first rifle. Um, what to choose if you're looking for one for a specific use. Uh, and, and, you know, in general, what's out there today uh, and quality and price levels, too. So, uh, I really uh, don't know where to start, but I guess we can start with uh, a good old standby that's been around forever. Um, most people know it, and uh, they're carried in a ton of different shops all over the place, and that's the Wasser 10. We grab one here. I'm surrounded by all kinds of beautiful rifles here. But this is a Wasser 10. It happens to be an older uh, one from, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And it's been upgraded a hair, but we'll give you an idea. Um, you know, People always call these entry level, and if you watch some of the older videos, um, they'll even say that, well, they're low quality, or a cheap AK, or what have you. Uh, and that may have been true some years ago, but the Wasser has, has changed quite a bit as far as quality goes over the last few years. Uh, they're imported by Century. They're built uh, in Romania at the Cougar plant and have been. Um, you know, when they first started coming in, there were a whole bunch of different versions. Uh, there were the SAR rifles and uh, all different, you know, stock patterns, etc. But the good old, and these early ones were built from um, older military kits that were demilled and rebuilt on new receivers imported here. The washers you're going to see today generally are going to come with blonde uh, American wood on them, not the laminate you see here. Um, certainly serviceable to start out with, but you'll probably want to change it out later. Um, let's use this for kind of uh, a what to look for when buying an AK. Um, AK in general is kind of a catch-all term for a lot of different variants so um, that's that's one thing to watch out for and we'll get into that as we go along the Wasser is just a nice representation of an AKM and a few things that are nice about this rifle is there are just a ton of parts and accessories made uh, for upgrading this rifle uh, there's tons of stocks, tons of forends, hand guards, um, grips, optics, uh, triggers, muzzle brakes, you name it. And all of it is basically going to fit on this. There's the most accessories made for AKs are made for AKMs, your standard AKM. And so it's really easy to personalize these rifles, uh, and that's a big plus. Um, your standard AKM is a one millimeter receiver. Um, the, you'll see them come with hardwood, you'll see them come with polymer. Really, that's just a, a 
preference type of thing. Um, standard profile barrel and it's 16 and a quarter inches. Comes with a slant brake. Um, standard adjustable sight um, for elevation and a windage adjustable front sight. Um, as far as what to look for uh, when buying an AK, well, one thing might be, you know, the furniture. Is it uh, a laminate? Is it a polymer? Or is it, you know, that American made, I call it balsa wood. Um, anything over and above that balsa wood would probably be considered an upgrade. Um, I would also take a look at when it comes to the receiver, the rivets. Now, these are fairly well made, even though it's an older gun, but you can see they're not perfect. They're, they're a little bit ugly, but they're certainly seated well. Um, you can't see any gap in between the receiver and the rivet. Um, they're well placed on the inside. They're done well. Um, so it's always a good thing to look at those rivets and make sure that uh, they're done properly, they're not loose and they're seated well and there's no gaps. Um, if the rifle comes with an optic rail, um, take a look at that. Make sure those rivets are good. Make sure that it's straight. Um, you know, there's some rifles out there that uh, frankly are hastily put together and uh, you can see those off sometimes. Um, probably the biggest thing you'll hear all the time, and, and Sentry gets bashed for it, uh, but it's not just something uh, that is a Sentry issue only. Um, it's canted sights. You know, when someone refers to canted sights, what it means, and it, and it can be other things, you can have a canted gas block. Uh, you can have a canted rear sight block, uh, canted front sight. And what that means is they're just not in a perfect alignment with the barrel. You may see uh, front sight canted off a little bit. You may see a rear sight block canted. Uh, an easy way to tell that, in between the ears of the front trunnion here, here's an ear of the front trunnion. Uh, you may see a gap on one side and not no gap on the other. That could be a sign that that's camped it off a little bit. Um, in a perfect world, you'd probably want to see uh, an even gap on both sides. Um, but, you know, things aren't perfect. And even if these sites are camped a little bit, um, it may or may not be an issue. As long as you can get the rifle on target by adjusting uh, the front sight uh, between the ears here, it's considered within spec. Now, does it give you a great sight picture if it's all the way off to one side? Probably not. But uh, again, it's an AK. Um, it's not an AR, and that would be considered in spec. Uh, but it's one thing to look for, one less hassle down the road. You can fairly easily straighten uh, a canted front sight um, by knocking out the pins, lining it up, drilling, and putting the pins back in. Uh, rear sight block's another issue, a little more complicated. Uh, gas block can be straightened too, but in, if you're buying a rifle, why not take a look and see that it's good right off the bat. Uh, just a couple things to look for. Another thing, a lot of rifles come into the country and the magwell is set up for only a single stack, um, a 10 round mag, and they're opened up to accept a 30 round mag here in the States. Uh, they can be done well, they can be done poorly. And what I would do is either ask the shop if they have a few different mags laying around and if you can check it or bring some with you. Here's a steel mag and put it in this gun and you'll see that there's a little bit of wobble side to side. I consider that a little more than most but not bad. Where you really get concerned is up and down movement this way. 
um, and there's very little here. This one actually fits pretty well, and polymer mags fit even tighter, but there are some mags that are looser in it. Uh, you know, you don't want them too tight, you don't want them too loose, but that's another thing to look for. Um, so, the Century Wasser, um, the new ones these days, you know, these used to be, I think I paid $2.99 for this rifle back in the day, and they're now, I think MSRP is like $7.50 or $7.98. A good deal on one today, or a screaming deal, is six fifty. You can probably find them in that six eighty range. So you know, a lot of the videos out there just aren't up to date with prices and whatnot. But if you can find one under seven hundred, it's a great rifle. They have upgraded their finishes. Uh, this one's been uh, painted, but uh, used to be their park was very thin. Uh, they come with all kinds of scuffs, scrapes, scratches. When I first saw this one, I thought it was a used rifle. <laughs> Turned out it was brand new. That's just how they do them. But today, the park finish is much better. The furniture is better. This was a real rough uh, oiled finish uh, when I got it. Just a much nicer rifle. Cougars realizing that the American public uh, likes shiny new weapons. <laughs> so they're doing their part. Um, and frankly, the cannon sight issue is nowhere near what it used to be. Most of the quality issues with Century guns was um, after the sunset of the assault weapon ban. Uh, the importers here were just pressuring uh, the factories to just pump out rifles one after the other and to hell with quality, you know. Um, so they've gotten much better over the years. But, uh, you know, this is about as inexpensive as they come. Uh, so it's a great weapon to look for, and it can be changed up, modified, used for a bunch of different uses, and a ton of fun for the money. While I'm on uh, that, let's talk about imported um, AKs versus American-made. Uh, same company, Century, um, has put out a few different all-American made rifles and they've had some issues. Um, you know, for the most part, they, they quite haven't figured out how to put a rifle together yet. Um, for those of you guys that own them, it's no shot against you. I know there's some good ones out there, but uh, there's a lot of, uh, of rifles with issues out there too. Um, one company that has put out a rifle that seems to be doing real well is Palmetto State Armory. Uh, they've got their Gen 3 AK out right now, and from all reports, early reports, they're doing pretty well. Things are holding up. Forged trunnions, uh, uh, forged bolts, carriers, all that good stuff, and they're holding up, and they're cheap, I think. You know, they're around 500, 550. Might be a way to go, but for my money, I'd probably spend a little more and get yourself a good imported uh, AK. And there's lots of choices still out there, and we'll get to them here. Uh, as far as quality on an AK, too, you probably want to look for, uh, if, if you can find it in the particular variant you're looking at, a uh, cold hammer forged barrel and chrome lining. Um, chrome lining may not actually make the rifle more accurate, but it will certainly give it a little more uh, durability. Um, so that's something to look for, uh, look for too. Um, you know, there's not as much corrosive ammo around these days, so that's not as much of an issue. Uh, I will say non-chrome lined barrels, such as some of the Yugoslavian variants, they'll outlast all of us guys so it's it's not that critical but it, i guess it is nice to have so that's another thing you can look at um make sure the rifle functions fairly smoothly no hang-ups uh although you will get some hang up on the hammers in a lot of cases um, simply because most of the ak variants are using some version of an American-made fire control group. 
uh, and the hammers are a little higher on those. That can be taken care of later, um, but as long as there's nothing, you know, uh, some real stoppages or something, just something else to check out on. Um, let's go through a few other variants here, and I'm sure, you know, some things to look for will pop into my head here as we go along, and we'll show you some higher quality options and some different variants as well. One of my favorite weapons uh, that unfortunately uh, they're still available in small quantities but um, due to some import bans with Russia are not being imported anymore. Um, this is a mullet vepper made of the mullet plant uh, in Russia. Basically the last uh, true Russian import to come in. Um, I was lucky enough to get a few of these uh, before they went away. Uh, they were priced before the ban hit. Oh, I think you can find them somewhere between 900 and 1200 bucks, depending on the variant. Um, for the FM version, uh, which is the straight receiver and set up like a military rifle, there were some with slant cut receivers that could be had much and still can be had uh, for cheaper. Right now, these are, and you can find them brand new. I've seen them recently, and they, the distributor here, um, Arsenal and the Fine fine group um, they they put uh, uh, some of these out occasionally they get a batch here and there this happens to be a fixed stock version um, if you want to uh, uh, modify your gun this it can be a little harder to find some parts for and the reason being is it's basically set up like an rpk it has bulge trunnions a thicker receiver uh, 1.5 millimeter um, a heavy profile barrel uh, so things are a little bit different there are some solutions out there and i'll show you some but there's hand guards available uh, this is a Russian uh, RPK handguard I put on here. It's got a cheese grater, uh, gas tube cover on it, a Bakelite mag, a Bakelite grip, um, and the standard polymer stock that came on it. These are super heavy duty weapons, guys, um, because of the, the heavier receiver and barrel and all. Really, really well-made, glassy smooth rifle. Beautiful finish, beautiful rivets. Everything is just phenomenal. Sights that are straight as an arrow. Um, I would put this as one of the top of the line imports out there. But they are gonna cost you in that 14 to $1,600 range today. Um, they're still available on the primary market and of course they'll be available for years to come on the secondary market and i suspect the primary market will go another year or two um, they'll still be popping up uh, just another variant if you want something uh, not really an akm pattern notice it doesn't have a cleaning rod either but a really heavy duty well-built rifle Next, I'm going to show you a, another imported rifle. This is imported uh, from Serbia, again by Century. Um, people like to knock Century, but Century does bring in a lot of good rifles. Um, Century was the importer for Zestava. Uh, Zestava is the company that makes this in Serbia, and Century was the importer. Um, Century brought in a bunch of different variants from Zestava. This one happens to be an MPAP. Came in with wood furniture, wood stock, uh, wood hand guards, um, and it's been changed up. Uh, they have a one millimeter receiver. Uh, the stocks do mount differently. The wood stocks, forget about this right now, guys. 
but uh, the woodstocks do mount differently than a standard AKM and parts uh, are not as numerous uh, to change this up but you can tell I found plenty of stuff to make this thing uh, do what I wanted it to do. We put an M4 adapter on it and the grip and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, they do have different uh, scope rails than any other variant out there that are specific to Yugoslavian variants. So you have to find a different mount that'll fit it. But these are pretty good quality rifles. I'd call this a mid-level rifle. Um, I've had a ton of Yugoslavians. I've never had an issue. The rivets are, are nice. Um, they've got one uh, feature that's different than any other rifles out there, and that's a push button here to hold the top cover on. Uh, so it cannot, absolutely cannot come off while firing. Um, I think I mentioned it before, Yugoslavian barrels are not chrome-lined. Uh, so if that's a big deal to you, it may be something uh, uh, you want to look at something else. But uh, a nice mid-level rifle. These uh, are no longer imported by Century right now. They're imported by Zestava USA. Um, and they're not called the MPAP anymore. Uh, but they are going to be importing this variety. The price is going up from what I understand. Um, these do pop up here and there, still new at some shops. You can find them. They're certainly on the secondary market. I just saw two brand new in the box today listed somewhere. Uh, they were going for $6.50 a piece. Great deal for that kind of money. For that kind of money, great deal. I would think the average is probably more like $7.750. Um, there was also a version of this called the OPAP. And it was essentially the same gun, but it had the bulge trunnions similar to the Vepper and the thicker receiver. Uh, most of those also came with military wood. Uh, they were definitely an upgrade to the MPAP and a great rifle if you can find one. Those seem to be going in that seven to $900 range right now, to give you an idea. Um, speaking of OPAPs, this is similar to an OPAP. Uh, again, a Century import, uh, an M70, happens to be an underfolder. Um, here's the bulge trunnions we talked about, so thicker receiver. This uh, came with polymer uh, stocks, I put the wood on. These have grenade launchers, flip-up night sights, front and back, and under folder stocks. Um, that brings up another point. You know, what are you looking in the first AK? Are you looking for something kind of standard to fix stock that you can change up, uh, leave alone, uh, maybe put an M4 stock on, or do under folders kind of float your boat? A lot of people say they're uncomfortable. I don't find them uncomfortable. Matter of fact, I really like them, and this was the first variant I ever bought. Second one was the Wasser. Back in the day, these went for $3.99. Um, you can still find them on the secondary market in that $600, $700 range. Um, a great rifle. Um, it'll last forever. These were subcontracted by Century. Uh, to some outside companies that built them for them and super high quality, well built, well put together on no deck receivers and similar to the OPAP. These also came in fixed stock versions, um, which uh, were those military, you know, OPAPs. Uh, and Century also put some together out of military parts kits. So they're out there. Um, if you have any questions about the Yugo variants, because there's a bunch of them, you can leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer you on that. Uh, but, you know, just another variety of what's out there. Um, they are kind of neat. A lot of guys like, uh, you know, seeing the, the folding stock. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, here it is with the stock folded. Um, just a cool look. Um, Makes for a nice truck gun, something like that. Uh, 
So you've got underfolders out there. They make wassers in underfolders too. Um, those are great guns. Um, so that's something else you can look for. Here is another variant. This is a Vepper, like I showed you there, but instead of an underfolder, it has a side folding stock. So just another variant if you're new to AKs and wondering what the heck, all this different stuff, what am I gonna buy? Well, all kinds of useful stuff. Um, makes it easy to transport, that kind of thing. Um, very comfortable, got a cheap pad. Not gonna go through everything because other than the stock, it's the same gun. I did tell you that Vepers were a little harder to find uh, accessories for. Well, here's a nice aluminum hand guard. There's stuff out there. The AKs are so uh, popular today, guys, that there's something for everybody as far as accessories go. So you can accessorize to your heart's content in most cases. But just another variant, that side folder. And we talked about the Vepra. These are, the side folders go for more than the fixed stock. They're, I see them in that $1,500, $1,600 range. Now, you know, what do you want to do with your, with your AK? You're buying your first one. Do you just want a plinker? Uh, do you want a home defense weapon? Um, do you want something you can bench shoot with or be a little more accurate? Or are you the guy that likes, you know, to collect high-end stuff? Um, there's a lot of collectible AKs out there, guys. Here's one right here. This is an early Chinese import. It is all done in Bakelite, and it's a side folder. Very rare variant and worth some good, uh, good chunk of change. Uh, there's Polytech Legends out there, uh, all kinds of stuff. So as you get into the hobby, uh, you can research to your heart's content and find plenty of this stuff out there. You know, Vepers for that matter. I guarantee you down the road those are going to be collectible, just like some of the Segas are, are really getting up there in price too. Um, so there's high-end stuff. These... At the time, guys, these were considered junk. When these first were coming in, they were considered junk. Lower than whale shit. They were worse than lobsters. Nobody wanted them back in the day. And these were $299, $399. Now you see some going for four grand, you know. So it, it's what the market will bear. Um, but just do your research so you know what you're doing if you're getting into stuff like this. Uh, what else do we have here? Here's another gun that I would consider, uh, well, let's say the manufacturer I would consider. Uh, they build mid to high end rifles. Um, this is an Arsenal uh, 107 uh, R. And it is a basic stamped receiver, very similar to the Wasser, just a little more attention to detail paid on these. Um, this came with a fixed stock. Again, it's been all done up. Everything, all your standard uh, accessories will fit on this. And uh, just a really nice rifle. You don't have to worry about cannon sights. Uh, you don't have to worry about rivets being loose. Uh, the mag walls, you can see, are nice and tight. Um, just a step up in build quality. These are, uh, the parts are manufactured in Bulgaria. Um, depending on what variant you buy, they can be built in Bulgaria or finished here in the U.S. by Arsenal, but Arsenal does a really nice job. Um, another thing we didn't talk about, do you want a stamped receiver, which all of these I've showed you are stamped receivers, or do you want a milled receiver? Milled receiver guns tend to be heavier, uh, tend to be smoother uh, as far as operation goes, uh, tend to be a little higher quality, um, and a really, really nice rifle. They tend to be more money too. Um, Arsenal makes their SAMs, their SAMs. They can go for, you know, upper teens, you know, 1600 
to even two thousand dollars for some of them. You know, they make them in under folders, uh, side folders, fixed stocks, you name it. Um, but really nice rifles. This is just an, a nice choice, an upgrade, next step up from a Wasser of a basic AKM and you can do all kinds of stuff to it. Really, really good choice. Um, have been some finish issues with these. Uh, you know, some of the paint's gone off this barrel but you really can't tell and they can always be refinished. Not a big deal. A um, couple other ways you can go. There are AK pistols available. This happens to be a mini Draco. It's actually made in the same plant that the Wassers are made in. Same receiver as a Wasser, shorter barrel. Um, this has a pistol brace on it um, to help steady the weapon and a ton of aftermarket parts on it. Normally it comes with their standard blonde wood up here. Um, I'll throw in some pictures of what some of these look like, you know, as stock rifles, because just about, you know, everything I have is pretty much changed up in some way, shape, or form. That's just part of the hobby. But, uh, yeah, built in the same plant uh, as the Wasser. And they make uh, a standard Draco, which I believe is a 10-inch barrel. They make the mini Draco. I think this is like a six and a half inch barrel and then they make the micro draco so there's there's pistols out there these are uh, good home defense weapons better have some air protection with you though they can be loud but that can be mitigated in um you know inside a house it can be a good truck gun it can be just a, a fun range toy um we've got uh, there's other choices too you can get into rpks this is, again, uh, a Cougar uh, Romanian weapon, and these have been recently uh, introduced again into the States. They're importing them again. And this can be a great uh, rifle to shoot off the bench and uh, try and do a little accuracy with. You can put a scope on it. Um, there's Romanian uh, um, PSLs available. Uh, they come with scopes. There's just such a wide variety that there's something for everybody. It really comes down to what you're looking for, what you're looking to, to do with it, how much money you want to spend, and what kind of quality you're looking for. Um, what I've showed you here is kind of a representation of what's available on the primary market as well as the secondary market. Um, Here's another arsenal. This is the same one that I showed you over here, the 107, that's a 107F, this is a 107FR. Same rifle, but uh, comes set up with a folding stock. The F stands for folder, the R stands for scope rail. Um, this is all done up in Russian Zenit Go furniture, but same rifle. Um, while we're on the subject, and since Arsenal uh, imports a wide variety, let's talk about calibers, guys. Um, you know, when we think of AKs, everybody thinks of 762 by 39. Every rifle I've showed you here today is 762 by 39. However, there is 545 out there. Uh, the 545 caliber is and a Russian's version of our 5.56 five, or 223. Um, a smaller diameter bullet, faster bullet, much less recoil. That may be something you're looking for, flatter shooting. Uh, maybe you're looking for less recoil, something like that. That's another choice. There's plenty of ammo out there for those. Um, they become a little less popular due to uh, some of the Russian uh, imported uh, surplus ammo going away uh, but uh, you know there were some naysayers that were saying oh it's going away you're not going to see them they're still here Arsenal makes a lot of rifles in 5.45 Arsenal makes some rifles in 5.56 uh, 2.23 um, as do some of the other manufacturers so maybe you want to get into that maybe you like ARs 
and uh, you want to keep one caliber, so you want to get an AK-556. Well, you can. Um, you know, if you want to get a Vepper, they make those in all kinds of calibers, from 308 to 762 by 54R, uh, 6.5 Grendel, uh, you name it. So there's the caliber thing out there too. Um, I don't know why I never got into the other stuff. I, I just like 7.62. I'll probably add some 5.45 one of these days, but you open a whole other ball or, or a can of worms with, you know, mags, different mags and uh, different ammo and all that kind of stuff. But there's something for everybody out there. Um, I've covered, like I said, a lot of rifles that are still available on the primary market, some that are only available on the secondary market. Uh, real quick, Wasser, primary market. Vepper, still primary and secondary, but going to go away on the primary market pretty soon. Uh, Zestava rifles, the NPAPs, etc., um, available on the primary market. Uh, Zestava USA is starting up again, so you'll have those available, but also on the secondary market and some leftover Century imports. Um, these Century M70s, uh, secondary market only. Um, that we talked about arsenals. Some models are available, some aren't. Um, there's batches, there's the distributor and then there's the warehouse and they tend to leak batches of certain stuff out every now and then and the stuff that's getting harder to find they put on gun broker and leak one at a time but uh, they got a ton of stuff available you know there's 104s there's 105s there's 107s there's all kinds of stuff uh, still available primary market and of course the secondary market Unfortunately, anything Chinese guys, they went away years ago with the band, so you're going to have to find those on the, on the secondary market. Uh, Dracos, mini Dracos, etc., primary market, still available, um, secondary market as well. These RPKs are back again, uh, don't know if they're going to stay though, so if you want one of those, uh, you might want to pick it up pretty quick here. What else is available out here, I'm not showing you. Uh, we talked about the American Made AKs, case, um, the Palmetto State Armory, the PS, I think it's PSAK. Uh, those are available primary market and inexpensive. Seem to be uh, going to be a pretty decent gun. Gonna hold up. Those are available. Um, there's a few other manufacturers out there, smaller manufacturers that have went away or been bought up. Um, you know, there's there's Riley Defense out there. Uh, uh, you'll find some of those. Don't know what they're doing uh, today. Um, there was a company that uh, uh, Palmetto State Armory bought brought bought out. Um, you know, some of those you, you pick and choose because you know there may not be warranties on them, even though you're buying them used. You're buying leftovers, so be careful there. Um, there's a ton of boutique manufacturers out there. Um, there's uh, Krebs Custom. This 107FR is a Krebs Custom gun. They build beautiful guns. Um, they're a lot of money. Um, you're going to pay up for the extra work they do on them. The extra finishing, they smooth them, they add things, they cut barrels. They'll make it just about anything you want. There's Rifle Dynamics. Uh, all these other boutique manufacturers out there. Do a little research on them. A lot of people like them. They're good rifles. Um, so you got that out there too. Um, there's a ton of good stuff out there. I, lately it seems prices have been going up through the roof, guys. So if this is something you're going to get into, uh, get into it sooner than later because what you see as a price on these rifles today may not be the price tomorrow. Um, I was fortunate enough to get into this years ago and paid dirt for most of this stuff. Um, I, I feel kind of bad for the guys getting into it today. Um, 
what you know what once was a, a poor man's toy is is now considered chic or whatever well I shoot them because I love them and I love a heavy caliber rifle I like uh, a 30 caliber rifle I always have and that's why I got into them there's something for everything out there uh, for everybody out there um, look for the few things I showed you that can be issues if you have any questions you got a question about a rifle you're looking at how much you should pay for something um, if something's correct or not maybe you see something on a rifle that oh I don't know if that's right ask me a question I'm more than happy to to get back to you on it and answer those questions um, help you avoid some of the pitfalls that are out there and there are some pitfalls um, you know it's not like the AR market where uh, pretty much everything's standardized and you can kind of Lego the thing together um, there's some manufacturers out there that uh, just didn't do a good job let's talk about one of them IO inner ordinance I would steer clear of inner ordinance 100% uh, they're not building rifles right now. I know that for a fact. I think they're still in business, but Not a good rifle stay away from them guys. Don't let anybody talk you into one no matter what um, Let's also talk about kit built guns You know it, you look at an AK in a shop and Oh, it's an AK. Well, yeah, okay is it import? Is it uh, is it an arsenal built gun? Is it a reputable manufacturer, or is it a, a rifle that was put together from an imported demilled parts kit that somebody put together in their garage or their shop? There's some great guys out there, tons of guys on the files that build beautiful rifles and really know what they're doing, but. You don't know who those guys are. You don't know if Chris put it together, or Joe Blow put it together. You don't know what methods they use. They don't. You don't know how it was head spaced. Um, there's not a manufacturer stamped on the gun. Uh, there may be a serial number on the gun, uh, but they're they're not a reputable ma reputable manufacturer. One of the ones I I mentioned here. Uh, just be careful. Not saying they're bad. Just be careful. Um, they tend to have a lower resale value on the secondary market too, and for just that reason, you don't know who built them. So, guys, I hope this helps some of the new guys out. Uh, I hope it helps bring some of you into the fold. Uh, like I said, any questions, comments, please leave them below. I'll get to them. I'll answer them. I promise you. Um, as always, please like. Please subscribe, that little red button down there. And uh, thanks for watching our videos. Without you, we got nothing. We love you. Have a good one. Rockford Ordinance out.